Welcome back to my channel, fellow gardeners. Today I want to talk about the asparagus fern. This is an asparagus fern and then we have the foxtail which is actually the same family except these fronds actually point upwards. So I want to do a propagation or let's say a repotting of this one and also with the foxtail get more into detail and also do a propagation on it. My name is Alice and I'm the Red Soil Gardener. Welcome back. What happened is I had this asparagus fern hanging in a pot on a tree. Now what happened is when I took a better look at it is the container it came in, let's say the plastic pot, actually all these little tubers had actually started pressing against the, the plastic pot and cracking it. And then I thought to myself, I can actually propagate this thing. If I repot it, I can actually get two asparagus ferns out of this particular plant and we'll do it together so we both learn how to do it. What I need to mention that although they are known as asparagus ferns, they're not real ferns. So you just have to treat it differently. Now this asparagus fern is basically, it, um, it actually looks beautiful when you do have it on a hanging basket and all these beautiful leaves just fall down. Now the other thing about this fern is, as I mentioned before, it does grow profusely in its pot and so it is time to repot it because otherwise what it does with these pots, the plastic pots, it does break them. Now when I did open it up I didn't realise that we have all these tubers in there but which is good because it actually says that the plant is, is is drought tolerant and that it does store a lot of water in these tubers. Now what sort of light does it want? Basically with an asparagus fern what I do with mine is I keep them in filtered light but I don't really like them in direct sun because sometimes it does turn the, the leaves in yellow and sometimes the leaves do start dropping so I usually use sort of filtered light, at least a bit of sun during the day, but basically I don't put it in harsh sun. Now, uh, with these asparagus ferns, is what sort of water requirement does it like? Basically, if you would go one step back and go into the soil, it does like a well-draining soil, so the water has to run through. And it is important because of these tubers, when they do get a lot of water, what they do is that they do expand as I can show you here and then what happens is that if it's too much water if it's too much water is that you can get root rot and they look like that now so what sort of water requirement does it need again as we said they are quite drought resistant and also you have to make sure you know that if you're living in a really, really hot climate, you would water it a bit more. However, if it is within your house, because some people do use it indoors, is I would use water only when the soil is dry. Now, the other thing about this plant is that um, it does produce berries and I'm just trying to look for those berries. It does have a white flower and it does flower quite well. And then at the end of the flowering season, it does produce berries as in here. These are the berries that it does produce. Now what happens with these berries is that as they sort of ripen, they will turn red. And it's really interesting because when you do have this plant and you have a multitude of berries and these berries are red, it actually gives you a really great feeling, almost a very Christmassy feeling. Now, if you do collect these berries and you dry them and remove the pulp, is that you can do a seed propagation with this plant. However, in the end, for me, I find that seed propagation sometimes do take a long time. I would rather be in a situation where I do a division on propagation. Now, this is what we're going to do, is because if you see this plant as I as I put it up in a ponytail, is that I have all these tubers that have formed in this, um, in this 
where it was in a pot and it's really squeezed as you can see. So my idea is that if I can divide it and actually open up those um, the soil a bit because also it's root bound that means basically the plant has lost a lot of its nutrients due to the excessive rooting and so we need to put it in fresh soil so that in the end it actually revamps itself and second thing is that just giving it a bit more space so what I'm going to do here is actually take my knife like this and wear my gloves because the plant is quite toxic and um, and then we're going to start to divide it so on with my gloves and so I'm going to try to see a location where I can divide it without actually spoiling the plant. I'm going to just really cut it through. It is quite tough because it's been in that pot for a long time. So I'm going to just go here like this. And actually, yeah, that's better. Okay, here we go. Now when we look at <laughs> when we look at our dear little baby here, we do notice that these tubers have actually taken over the soil. So it is time to actually really um, open it up and put it in fresh soil because there's hardly any soil there. It's just tubers going around in circles and um, and they've actually taken over everything. I need to cut it up here. So what I notice here is basically all the tubers have really taken over the space and actually there's very little soil where it was originally is. So what I'm going to do is actually trim some of these tubers off and then we start afresh and maybe remove some of these dead foliage and then we just take it from there. So I'm going to Put this one in the operating table like that and I'm going to just keep these aside and I need my scissors so what I'm going to do now is remove some of these I'm going to cut here remove that because though you do need the tubers is um, basically it was really root rot, uh, sorry, root bound, and it was actually suffocating. So I'm just going to remove some of these. There we go. What has happened is that the tubers and the roots have really encircled the plant and actually really suffocated it. Look at that. So we just let it drop these like that a lot so I'm just going to again remove these so that's my plant so what I'm going to do is we've done these little these little plastics and I really do prefer having plastic um, pots for this particular one because then with plastic it does retain a bit of moisture meaning you don't have to water it that often whereas terracotta actually breathes and it, it actually you lose quite a bit of water from the because it's so porous so I'm going to just take some of the soil and pour it in here it's an operation Go. So what I'm going to do is actually put it in like that. Just try to get it a bit more central, and then we're going to fill it. Yeah. And what we did is actually, I did water the soil a 
I did water the soil so it is moist so I don't have to water it again. So here we go. So I'm going to do this one here and I'm just going to leave it aside and we'll do a similar one with this. Look at that. So I'm just going to trim it. Just chop all these and open it up. Totally root bound. And again, hardly any soil because it's been root bound for so long that um, in the end there's no real nutrients and you can actually see it in the foliage because it hasn't really grown in the last few years because there's hardly any nutrients. So I'm going to just remove these just like that. And then I'm going to take another pot. Here we go. And again, do a similar thing. Pour this in here. Stick this one in as we did with the other one and then fill it up with soil. So let's move these ones here. These plants now have actually got fresh soil. So basically it will do well compared to before. And, um, and most probably it will grow and the foliage will actually be more because prior to putting it in here is, um, there was hardly any saw because it was so root bound. I'm just going to take her ponytail and put it on either side. So that's my number two. So what I'm going to do now as we've cleaned up and they actually look really well. Now what I've done is that these plastic pots actually we've just made holes on the side, put the wire so we can actually hang it. It's a very simple way to do it. So basically before we hang them, and before we look at the foxtail, which we also need to repot, is I'm just going to try to uh, look at this and I'm just going to remove some of this because we, we want not so much energy now to go into making so many leaves or supplying all those leaves is, um, and so it can revive itself. So I'm just going to remove these, I'm just going to throw them here. Just go here, maybe this one I can remove from the base there. This one from the base, this one cut from the base. And um, yep, that looks good, that looks good. This one I'm going to just remove some of the foliage. And um, yep. So I think with this one, we're good to go. Yep. So this one is ready for hanging. So I'm going to just leave it there in the corner and we have a look at this one because this is a bit, a bit scraggy, I think. So I'm just going to try to open it up a bit. And so it just looks a bit, and then I'm going to also do exactly the same and minimize it the leaves just like that and then it can start again this one because because with this particular one looks like the leaves have dropped so I'm going to cut it from base right there at the base and then this is fine I'm going to cut these ones like that it's like giving them a haircut so okay so what do we have here is I believe that what's going to happen because now we've given it fresh soil so at least and we've removed it from being root bound is the nutrients will actually go to the plant properly and basically I think we'll get we will get other shoots so these ones are ready to go on the trees so now
let's have a look at the foxtail and see what sort of makeup it has underneath the soil and we want to actually clean it up and repot it so thank you fellow gardeners let's go into part two the foxtail asparagus fern <laughs> 